We are expecting our first frost here in Northeast Florida. And while I'm in zone 9B now instead of 9A, it doesn't change the fact that frost could be bad news for a few of the things I am growing here in the meadow. So this morning, instead of making the video about the seeds I'm planting, I'm gonna take you along while I protect some of the more tender plants. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle and welcome back to my meadow. I'm gardening in zone 9A in Northeast Florida. I'm not an expert gardener, but I love showing you the good, the bad, and the ugly and embracing the imperfection that learning to garden has to offer. Last night, we took a couple of these pullover bags out that we got from Amazon and put them over the top of the dragon fruit, but clearly this is too small to easily fit over and pull down. So I'm gonna take this one off and swap it out for something a little bit larger. It was kind of hard putting this on last night too, but it's, it's cool. Um, this is not a review video. Nobody sent me these products. I bought them myself and I don't have an opinion on them yet. It's just what I am trying. When I do have an opinion, I will let you know. I do like how it zips on and off and maybe off will be easier than on, but part of it is just the weird shape of the dragon fruit, but I'm gonna stick something larger on this one. And last night in the dark, it was hard anyway, cause it was dark. I did discover, and you may be wondering why I bought these for the things that I need to protect. The first year that I needed to protect them here because we just moved here a few years ago, things were really small. And so the sheets and blankets that I already owned um, would fit just fine over the few things that I needed to protect. But now I have so much growing on and I don't have everything that needs to be protected. I just needed something that was a little bigger and a little easier for me to be able to do by myself. And so we're trying these out. The dragon fruit are an important plant to our family. And so, again, I think I said this the other day, the same about the tabibua. These really matter to Mrs. Michelle and Mrs. Michelle really matters to me. So we're protecting it. Let's put this smaller one over the Catalina guava here. Like that. The other thing I like, really, it's kind of sticking up a little bit and not touching the leaves, which is really better from what I have learned. You really don't, if you can, as much as you can avoid touching the covers to the leaves. Now this is just gonna be frost, not a hard freeze. But if you're having a hard freeze and you've touched your fabric directly on all the leaves, there's a chance the leaves that are right at the edge will get frostbite. Um, and so anytime you can sort of create some dome effect without touching all the leaves, I think that helps. All right, onward. All right, let's see how this works here on the tabby bua. The tabby bua is supposed to flower in February. I see some little buds, so I definitely wanna try to protect this. to figure out the cinching just a little bit more. The cord is so long, it's kind of tough, but I think if I pull it back this way some, kind of like threading, like threading a hoodie or something. I'm trying to pull that so it can be a little bit tighter. And then I just wrapped it around the bottom of the tree I think that should hold. We'll see how that does. Maybe just hold the heat in from the tree a little bit. Um, tonight, I'm not gonna set up any of the spotlights, but I do have an incandescent bulb that once the weather starts getting colder, I'll be sure I'll stick and shoot up, 
shoot the light up into that to help keep any of the actual hard freeze off of it if we start getting hard freezes. Now, back here on Orchard Row, and I can tell you that even after a hard freeze, some of the things that were back here last year were unaffected by the hard freeze. And honestly, I've always heard, and maybe I should do my own research, that cold, the cold snap is what helps set the sugars in the oranges and the citrus. And so I'm not as worried about these things out here. Also because we are under this canopy, it doesn't get as cold out here as it does in the rest of the yard. Actually, this avocado tree is right up against the fence. So that's gonna be easy enough to pin a piece of frost fabric down over that. So I don't think I'm gonna cover that up tonight. I am going to pick my peppers I see over there. I have this handle here. Maybe that'll help me lift and carry it over like that. That's good. That worked really, really well. Perfect. Great suggestion. Great suggestion, neighbor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That worked great. All right. Now I'll just pull it on down. about that. <laughs> I would have never thought I had a size that fit perfectly over a bed like that. That's great. <clears throat> all right, all right, all right. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this basil back closer to the fence. I can't believe this is just one plant, y'all. This is one plant. <gasps> She's so lovely. And I'm gonna bring the avocado down a little. And then bring these citrus trees in. Because over here it does not have the same kind of microclimate as back in the orchard row. I've got my clamps here. These are like, honestly, probably one of my most indispensable non-garden garden tools that I have. So what are you doing to protect your plants from the cold? I would love to know about your methods down in the comments below. And even though our average low temperatures have decreased and my growing zone changed from 9A to 9B, it doesn't mean I don't need to still protect my plants on the days that it's gonna be colder than expected or colder than those averages. So if you wanna know more about what's growing on here in the garden, be sure to check out that video right over there. And until next time, my friends, remember to drink plenty of water, wear that high quality sunscreen, stay warm, and as always have a fantastic day.